Let's dive into it. You know, you developed a uh, a compound uh, to find and zap senescent cells. So when when you're doing your doctoral work and you're laying down the foundation for uh, for one skin and the OS one product, um, did you did you set out to focus on senescent cells or yeah, talk to me about that. Yeah, no, actually we started, um, well, back in Brazil, we were doing something else. We were growing human tissues derived from stem cells to replace animal testing. Um, mm. Very different when that first endeavor didn't work out, but uh, we we got the opportunity to move to the U.S. and and focus primarily on skin. And at that point, we decided to use our expertise to grow human skins in the lab and test any anti-aging product that were already in the mar market uh, to measure if they could actually promote any age reversal effect. So because we are able to measure the age of the skin by reading the epigenetic signature, we could determine if a skin is like 50 years old, we can test a given product and we can measure how many years that product would reduce, hopefully reduce the age of the skin. What we found really fast is that most products that are there claiming to be anti-aging, uh, most of them cannot decrease the age of the skin. Some can accelerate the age of uh -huh. the skin. <laughs> and none of them were actually targeting what we believed to be one of the primary causes of aging. So we saw that the industry that's claiming to be anti-aging is completely outdated. They haven't evolved in their approach. And we, we because we were studying so much about aging and we were seeing a lot going on in the, you know, cell reprogramming, cellular senescence, and different strategy to target the fundamental, you know, mechanisms that are driving aging, we realized there was a better way to actually address this problem, to target aging at the source. So at that point, we decided to shift from being like a testing company to actually uh, a, a company that would search for new molecules, uh, more specifically peptides. Uh, we were interested in peptides because it's already commonly used in, in cosmetics. And for those who don't, don't know, peptide is basically a, a, a the building blocks of a protein, right? If you if you think in that way, it's like a small sequence of amino acids. And for example, insulin is a peptide and, and peptides can have this effect of entering the cell and, and act as a messenger so they can activate certain pathways uh, or suppress others. And we were looking for peptides that could selectively, you know, uh, switch off senescent cells or decrease the burden of senescent cells. So we spent the first uh, five years of One Skin just doing the research in order to find this peptide. We I mean, partnered with the, you, uh, using using the the platform you had created for testing everybody else, right? Yeah, exactly. First, we developed this platform that. Uh, uh, one, we can replicate the skin aging the lab, so we can replicate a very young skin to a very old skin, so we understand exactly what is changing in that process, uh, and we can measure the age of the skin. The second is that we use the, these cells derived from progeria donors, so progeria is a rare and genetic disorder that children age really fast and they accumulate senescent cells really fast. So we use cells derived from those donors to screen peptides. Mm. So we tested over 900 peptides, but initially we partnered with this university in Brazil. They were studying antimicrobial peptides and they had a library of 200 peptides. We decided to test them against these progeria cells. And in that first round of screening, we found four hits. So basically four peptides that performed the better. Uh, and then we used an algorithm that helped us to do uh, permutations, so changing the sequence of the amino acids in a way that we could optimize the efficiency and we generated another 700 peptides out of those four. And we test again against, you know, the same progeria cells. 
Uh, that's where that's when we found OS1, and OS1 has this ability of decreasing up to forty percent the load of senescent cells. That's amazing. Yeah. So, so how? So we talked about peptides, and again, just to, to remind folks, you know, in, amino acid is a basic building block, um, and your DNA codes for uh, uh, basically proteins, which are made up of a sequence of amino acids, and those proteins can be you know, um, hundreds or thousands, uh, uh, tens of thousands of amino acids long, and they're assembled in your ribosomes. But the the signaling peptides are rather small, right? They're short sequence yes. amino acids. So what size amino acids, how many, uh, what size peptides, how many amino acids were the range of them that you were testing? Yeah, the range was between 10 and 14 because also to be able to penetrate the skin, there is a limit in, in the molecular weight. Uh, so the OS1 is 10 amino acids. So it's over a little bit over uh, 1,000 Daltons. So and because of the polarity and the conformation of the peptide, we can guarantee the penetration of the peptide you know, uh, throughout the, the stratum corneum, the skin barrier. Uh, but obviously, if you get to a bigger peptide, it becomes more challenging. You need to sure. use the sophisticated del delivery system. So luckily, OS1, it's a size that we can apply topically and we can detect the you know penetration up to the dermal layer. That's the layer that uh, contains the fibroblasts that produce collagen, gives like the firmness and the structure of the skin. 